All right, guys, sorry for the poor quality video. This is just the only option I have right now. So <clears throat> I just want to show you how I use the Dual Fish Eye plugin. So first of all, you need to install the plugin onto the camera itself. And you can if you go to the Rico website and Theta Z1 Dual, Dual, Dual Fish Eye, it'll give you instructions. It's pretty easy. Once you get it in there, you um, on the side, you go to you hold down mode. And you just you'll get come into this menu. You hit mode. I have it currently set to go to, to number three. And you, you set this up through the Theta app. And I can show that to you later, maybe. But do I dual fisheye plugin is op the option right there. You go ahead and hit the menu button to select it. And then it says right now JPEG single. So I'm gonna hit the function button once and that'll put me to DNG. Okay. Then I'm gonna hit the mode button and it's gonna toggle through all the different modes I can shoot in. Now you can do DNG single, you can do DNG bracket, you can do DNG burst, and you can do HDR, DNG, plus, minus one, et cetera. So this is the setting that I usually use. It's the HDR setting. And then on the third menu, you hear this Wi-Fi and Bluetooth button. You just tap that and it'll toggle through the different exposures you can do. So you can do plus one, plus, minus one, two, three, four, and, uh, and up to, so you can essentially do nine different exposures. And what'll happen is dual fisheye will actually stack them all within the camera. So I usually just do um, the H HDR uh, plus minus two. That'll give me five total exposures. Um, if it's a really contrasty day, I might go up to the next one, but I usually just do the plus minus two. And then what you do is you hold down the button again, the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth button, and it'll give you a 10 second timer. Okay, so essentially you just hit this, uh, hit the picture button, walk away and hide, you got 10 seconds, it'll fire it off. And what you'll hear, if you have the volume on, you'll hear six different beeps go. Um, if you have it to plus minus two, so you'll hear, um, you'll hear, it'll sound like six different photos are being taken. One of the, the last one is just the, um, I think it's just like letting you know it's done taking it. So um, it, that's kind of confusing. So just keep that in mind. Just listen for the beeps and that's how you know when it's done. And then, yeah, now I'll show you how to bring those images into the computer and edit them. Okay, so now we're at the computer. I just want to give you guys a, a heads up, fair warning that on a normal shoot, average, you know, 2,300 square foot home, that's what this was. Um, it's going to take you about 30 minutes or so to edit and probably about 30 to 45 minutes before your 360 tour is actually online and published. So this is not a quick process. It's somewhat tedious. It can be a lot quicker if you're, if you're not anal about it and you just want to get something up there. You can, you don't have to use the dual fisheye. You don't have to do all this. I'm just showing you the more advanced process that I go through. Um, that, that you can go through rather, uh, if you use the Z one and you want to get the best possible image quality out of it. Again, you can just slap the camera on the monopod, hit the button, take an exposure, and then upload them straight to the cloud panel. If you want and be done in 15 minutes, I just like to take it a little extra. And that's what this whole, the whole point of this is, is showing you first thing I do. And I'm on a 2019 iMac. So this process that I'm going to do and bringing the photos in is, is for uh, Mac, but I think the same, it's the same similar process for PC. So I already have my 360 camera plugged in via USB-C. I open up the Ryko Theta transfer Mac, or app uh, for Mac. I already have all my files highlighted and I just dragged them into the folder that I want them in. Now, these are all f uh, three image stacks. Um, so I only did three exposures. It was kind of an overcast day. I've got all my files copied into the folder I want. And I'm going to go into Lightroom here. And I'm going to find the folder. I already created the folder in Lightroom as well. I'm going to go to import to this folder. I'm going to open up the finder. And there's probably an easier way to do this, but this is just the way I'm doing it. And I'm only going to highlight the ones that are labeled HDR under or, uh, HDR.dng. I don't want to bring in the other ones. Those are there as reference files. So we're just going to highlight these. And then I'm simply just going to drag all of these. In fact, I don't need this one. I'm going to drag all of these into here. And you can see it's got all the HDR.dng files selected. I'm going to hit add up top. And I'm just going to go ahead and import. 
Now for Mac, this is a very important step. And this is the first thing that I do when I, when I import the files into Lightroom. As you can see, they're all really dark, but we're not even gonna do that yet. The first thing I'm gonna do is you have to rename these the file names and you can't do this in the folder you have to do it in Lightroom because you're not you're not replace you're not replacing the actual um it, you're replacing what Lightroom is reading as the file name it, it, it's hard to explain but there's one thing you have to do and it's you know maybe they'll fix this in the future but as of right now this is April 2020 um you have to do this so what you do is you simply delete the underscore from the file name and you add a hyphen and that's it. And you have to do that for every image and I'll explain why in a second. In fact, I'll show you why in just a second. So I'll just whiz through these really quick and time lapse it for you so you don't have to wait. Okay, so I left this last one. Um, I didn't change the, the title of this last one and I'll, and I'll show you why you need to do this in just a second. So if we go to our develop panel and I'm just gonna expose this really quick so we'll, we'll bring this up. And you can see it, it captures a lot of dynamic range, um, this dual fisheye plugin. So I would highly recommend using it. Plus it, you don't need to do the manual, uh, the manual um, blending. So that just makes it really nice. So I pretty much have it exposed how I want it. So the way you stitch these to where these two, um, you know, circles can make one stitched 360 image, you have to download the Ryko or the Rico. I think Ryko sounds better. They should have called it Ryko. Anyway, the Ryko uh, Stitcher plugin uh, for Lightroom, and there I'll put a link to that down in the in the comment in the description. Um, and there's really good instructions on how you install that in Lightroom. So, anyway, all you do is you right click on it, edit in Ryko Theta Stitcher, and you hit edit, and it pulls up the plugin now. You go, you'll, if you do not rename your files, you'll get this error, no compatible DNG files. Again, I, I think it's just a bug that they haven't worked out. The developer, I believe, uses a PC because all the tutorial videos are done on PC. So I just don't think the, the workflow for Mac is priority. Um, also, I know that they have an app for Android and not for Apple. So I'm guessing it's just deprioritized. Um, but either way, there's a workaround and that's just what you have to do. So I'm going to hit OK because I can't stitch this because I didn't rename the file. So we're just going to go ahead and delete the copy it made. We're going to go back to the file and I'm going to rename it. Remove the underscore, add the hyphen, and I'm going to do it again. And now it's going to allow me to do it, you'll see. So this is the um, Rico Theta Stitcher plugin for Lightroom. Uh, it's it's not that good of a, it, it works well, but it's just you can't resize this window, so you only see the small preview, unfortunately. So usually their auto settings are pretty good. Um, assuming your camera's le camera was level, it does an automatic correction, um, but you can adjust the manual settings here if you want to, like I can adjust pitch and roll you know, I'm not going to do that, obviously. Let me put this back to where it was. You can adjust where you want the front position to be and so forth. So we'll go ahead and let's go back to automatic settings. We'll go ahead and hit OK. And in just a second, it will give me a fully stitched image, as you can see. So that's the first one, and we're done with that. And now we're just going to go through and we're going to basically do the same exact thing for every other image. So uh, this is the first image and I'm not going to edit every photo in front of you. I'm going to probably time lapse through it because I just wanted to show you what the process looks like. I'm not going to show you everything. Okay, so more or less that's fine. Um, I, you know, I can take down the saturation on some of these blues a little bit so where it's not as, you know, bloomy. And again, it was kind of an overcast day, so I probably could have got a couple more exposures. Um, I think with the dual, dual fisheye plugin, you can stack up to 10 images, if I'm not mistaken, which is quite a bit. So, um, so that one's done. I'm just going to simply copy the same exact settings across the board to all of them. We'll go ahead and sync. And I'm just going to go through all of them and make sure that we're good to go. Now, you'll notice my monopod bases down there and I'll show you how to get rid of that later. It's actually 
pretty simple, a slightly time consuming, but once you get a flow down, it's actually not that bad. I'm really just checking for exposure to make sure these are all exposed properly. Okay, I feel good about all these. So we're just gonna go ahead and again, I'm gonna go through and um, do that same stitching thing that I did with the plugin. And since I already renamed all these, you'll see it'll work fine. I'm just gonna hit okay. Now, here's a, here's a thing. Um, you'll notice the verticals are slightly off and that's because the monopod isn't, wasn't rather completely level um, on all photos. And you can adjust the, the verticals on this to where you know, they'll be a little bit better. Um, but honestly, I don't usually worry about it with 360 photos. I'm not looking for perfection with real estate. I'm just letting you know you can adjust those if you need to. So again, this is not rocket science. It's very, it's a very simple process. I'm not going to sit here and make you watch me edit every single one of these because it's literally the same exact process on repeat. So that said, I'm gonna go ahead and time lapse through this thing and then I'll show you my next step in the process. Unfortunately, as of right now, there's not a batching method and if there was, that would be excellent. It would really save a lot of time. So you have to do these one at a time, um, which is kind of a pain and there may be an easier process for doing all this, but as of right now, this is the easiest way that I found to do it all. Um, and it's really just a matter of putting your fingers on the keyboard and on the mouse and just building some muscle memory around it. Okay, so now I have all of them stitched and ready to export, but before I do that, there's one last step I do, and I'll explain why I do this later, but I go through and I, I name all of the files in the title here, and I, I, I number them first. And the, well, the reason I do this is because when I upload them to Cloud Pano, I can sort by title, and it will basically put them all in the order that I want. It just saves me a step later on from having to sort them. Um, plus it makes them easier to find. So I'm just gonna go ahead and name these quick. So um, front. Okay, so now we have all of these named. We're gonna go to the export. And I do have an, uh, a 360 export and it basically just export them, exports um, and, and renames them as the title that I named there. And then I just do full resolution, JPEG, sharpen for screen. Uh, that's really, that's, that's, that's all I do for this. So we'll name the, this is the address of the property. Now, you could be done there if you want. There's, there's a couple things. Now I mentioned the, being able to see the tripod or the, the base of the monopod. You can do a few things. Um, honestly, what I normally do for real estate is I simply just crop. I just crop to where I don't see the base of the tripod anymore and I just export those. But I'm gonna take it a step further today in case you have like a really nice listing and you wanna be able to see the floor, I'm gonna show you what I do in those instances. So we're, we're going a step further on this. So what we'll do is we'll open up Photoshop and we're gonna open every single one of these files now this seems like overkill, and like I said, it kind of is. Um, this is only if you have a special property and you're, or maybe a commercial property and you wanna be able to see the floor. This is just the best way to do this. So I'm gonna open up every single one of these files. All right, so I have them all open. Now what you do is you'll go up to 3D, Spherical Panorama, New Panorama Layer from Selected Layer. And I do this a lot, so I, you'll normally get a dialogue saying, do you wanna go into the 3D workspace? Say yes. And here it basically stitches it together for you and you've got a functioning 3D image. It's low, it's low resolution for the time being because it's just, it's just, you're just editing. Now what you'll do is you'll just rotate around until you get down to the, the base of the tripod. You'll see this here. And literally all you do, I'll just take my lasso tool and actually let me, lasso tool, go around here. And you go, uh, if you do shift F5 on a Mac, um, you can switch to content aware fill. 
And I, uh, that's a little, literally it. Okay. Now it's obviously not perfect. You're not looking for perfection. You just don't want the base of the tripod to be a distraction. And that this solves that problem. So I just simply export it. You go, go to 3d spherical panorama, export panorama and name it whatever you want. I just click on the file name and it will create a copy. So I'll hit save, hit replace done. Don't save this. And you'll see if I go into that folder, it creates a copy. So here's the copy without the tripod base. Here's a copy with the tripod base. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. Now we're just going to basically do the same exact thing for all of these. I'll show you one more and then I'm going to go ahead and, uh, breeze through the rest of these. Okay. So again, hit L for lasso shift F five and you select content aware under the fill. And again, this isn't necessarily going to be perfect, especially if you have hardwood floors, but you're not looking for perfection. You just want to take away the distraction. And if somebody really wants to get analytical about it and see how you did it, they're going to stare and they're going to notice, whoops, they're going to stare and they're going to notice that you did something, but it doesn't really matter. So shift F five and that's it. And again, it's, we're not looking for perfection. I can't say this enough, but do what you can. So 3d export panorama. This is bedroom two. Hit save, replace. Command W don't save it. And that's it. And I'm going to go ahead and time lapse through the rest of them. Before I go too far, I just wanted to point out this one because this will happen from time to time. And this is simply just, I should have adjusted the stitching, but I didn't. Um, you can fix these in the stitching in Lightroom. It's just not worth the time and effort that it takes. So again, generally people aren't going to be really worried about the floor. I mean, they know it's a 360 photo. They're, they're smart enough to realize it's not like witchcraft or anything. So you just have to kind of be okay with it. Um, again, you can go through and you can fix this in the stitching if you want to. I j it just isn't worth the time for a real estate shoot. So we're just gonna go ahead and continue taking out this as normal. Otherwise, this is one of those instances where I might even just do the cropping um, to where it doesn't show up. I keep on doing that. And then what I'm going to do just to get rid of these is I'm going to get rid of all of the first ones. And we're all set. So now we're going to go into cloud pano and I won't walk you through the entire process. I just want to show you essentially why I named these the way that I did. Um, so it's going to upload them cloud pano. I'm going to time lapse through this. Okay. So I'm not going to walk you through the entire cloud panel process. You can see that in this video that I'm going to link above at the end. But this is why I essentially named them when I did, because then I can just come in here and sort by title. And then I will go through and rename all these. So let me know if you have any questions on this process. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, yeah, I, the next video I put out will likely be finally showing you my actual process. I just need somebody available to film me. And right now we're in the middle of the quarantine, so really can't do that. So anyway, thank you for watching.